But I will tell you one thing for sure, that the whole world is lying in ignorance and ill-informed stupidity. They have no idea in the world what's really going on on this earth. And if you do, you need to keep your mouth shut. I've been told by people in government, I've been told by uh, officials in government, you need to keep your mouth shut. And the reason why is because I know who these people are. I know because I've been there. I know who they are, what they're doing. I know how the world really works. I know how this government really works. And I know how desperately evil it really is. You have no idea in the world how desperately demonic and depravity we have over us in America today. So if there is a devil, we've got it. And uh, we are in an extremely uh, dangerous situation at this moment. The republic is now being unraveled and destroyed. And what is coming, you don't want to know. It's it's really a, a tragedy. And like I said, the only light at the end of the tunnel for me is a train coming because I've been trying for many years and never been able to tell people what really uh, I have, what I really actually have. I've been wanting to, but I, like you said, I've never sold out. Well, the reason why is very simple. I consider this kind of knowledge absolutely important for the human race to know. But it needs to be presented in the correct way. It needs to be pre- presented professionally with all the documents and pictures, etc. So I don't have the funds to do that. As you said, I move from one house to another all continually because I have no place to live. I don't have the funds to do what I want to do. I don't have it. But one, one thing I do have is I know what's going on. And I know that if the American people ever saw one half, of what I haven't told you and what I actually have, uh, the church, government, banking, institutions around the world are going to, are going to pay a terrible price for the lies that they have perpetrated on the American people. And I've been looking at this stuff for a long time. And I, all I can tell you is I wish I had the funds to present my work to the world. And watch what happens when the people, the ordinary working class people, see for the first time with their eyes, not just hear it from me, but actually see it with their own eyes, what has really been going on in Washington, D.C., and how our country is being raped and destroyed and plundered while the pe- while the enemies of our country and our way of life are mocking us and in front of our faces, they're producing television shows mocking America, mocking the American citizens. They mock our teenagers with uh, with cartoons of Beavis and Butthead. They they mock our families, our, our American families, with with uh, their s- stupid cartoons and the Simpsons and things like that. They mock America. They mock the 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 whole idea of freedom and liberty and justice and and the decency and honor and morality is being mocked right in front of our faces and in and, and my view the most uh, destructive enemies that this country has ever had is the modern day Christian church if there is any place that there is a conspiratorial apparatus in place to destroy the American people it is in what we call today the Christian church. It is filled with filthy, degenerate lies, deception, incredible sexual, financial corruption. You have no idea in the world how bad it really is. And I've known it for a long time, but I am just one old man trying to wake people up, and I've been doing it for, since 1962. And I paid a terrible price for it, and I've lost everything. But I, I, I got to tell you, if you don't wake up, if the people of this country do not wake up, they're going to find that there's, what is coming is going to be far more demonic, far more devastating, evil, bloodshedding, filthy, and degenerate 
people who are leading our great country and our people into chaos. And it's all been planned a long time ago, a long time ago. As far back as 48 years ago, uh, I was looking up the time. It was 48 years ago I came across some information uh, and in Los Angeles in my research, I came across something that was very, um, it was not challenging at all. It was just some information about uh, the Soviet Union, and that was back in 1967. And I was doing some research on communism, and uh, I've always been interested in Nazism, fascism, communism, all of the different political movements of the world, and how they are actually financed and how they are actually put into place by secret powers behind the throne. Where does the money come from? It was always my uh, the starting point for me. Where does the money come from to finance world communism? I mean, I know that the United States used to feed the Soviet Union. They had no money. They didn't even have enough uh, uh, potatoes to make vodka. So we, the United States banks, uh, all of our major banks and the major banks in England had to provide them with money to buy food, to buy guns, to uh, to buy their military, to pay their military. Well, we paid for that, America. We sent them money to pay. As a matter of fact, there was an article in uh, Argosy magazine back many years ago uh, where they, it was a great expose, very important expose done in Argosy magazine. Where, and I'm talking about 59, 60, 61, I think, right about then, where the Federal Reserve had sent to the Soviet Union uh, back in 1948, uh, 19, what is it, uh, 1940s, early 40s, these, the Soviet Union was starving. They couldn't fight Hitler. They couldn't fight anybody because they didn't have the money. They didn't even have the food to feed their troops. They were broke, and uh, because that's the way communism operates. It's always broke because nobody works. I mean, I know two communists, and they don't work. So uh, the United States Federal Reserve, according to this article, uh, sent the plates uh, for hundreds and fifties and twenties to the Soviet Union. They sent the plates to roll off the money. Because it would look, it would look bad, it would look strange, and they couldn't keep it secret if they were running off uh, 24 hours a day, running off the money, packaging it up, and sending it to the Soviet Union to pay for their troops and their guns and their food. And so it would look bad if anybody ever found out there's going to be no way to hide it if that many billions of dollars are going out uh, every month to the Soviet Union to feed it and finance it. So it was found, it was decided that we'll just send them the plates for the money and let them run it off at home. Let them run it off there. So the Federal Reserve is sending the plates to their money to the Soviet Union because the, because the Russians and the Soviet communists are starving. They need the money to buy food. They need the money to import food. They're dying. They don't even have enough, enough money. They don't have enough uh, uh, potatoes to even make vodka, like I said. So we had to send them money to keep them up. We need to keep them and support them. And so General Motors and Ford Motor Company and, and Eli Lilly Glass and Union Carbide and all the big corporations, including the uh, three or four major banks like Citibank and, and City Core and, and, the, and Commercial Bank out of uh, uh, Atlanta, was sending hundreds of millions of dollars uh, to the Soviet Union to keep it going. Nobody seems to realize that. Nobody seems to question where did the communists in the Soviet Union get the money to build a great army and build a, you know build that great communist threat. It's financed out of out of a lot out of uh, New York, financed out of Georgia, out of out of Chicago, out of London. That's where the money came from. So what does that tell you? It tells you that we have an incredible, blood-lusting, blood-letting, murderous banking system that is financing, organizing, and directing world communism. 
world wars, violence, alcoholism, drug addiction, the meddling cartels and the Cali cartels and the great cartels of drug running down in Central and South America. Uh, it's, it's an extraordinary story of betrayal of the human race. And I could sit here and talk all night about things that you've never heard. And I've sat with these people and the people who are and the, the real movers and shakers. I've sat with them in private and talked with them. So I know what I'm talking about. You have no idea in, in the world what's really going on in this country called America today. And if the people ever found out how this thing, this trick has been worked on us for a long time and nobody can do anything about it because the people in power are frightened to death. The congressmen and senators know if they say anything, they're going to have a bad accident. Their family is going to have a bad accident or they'll be made to look like a fool in the papers. And so just all you need to do is ask the wrong questions in front of an audience of the president or of a congressman, and watch what happens to you later. So in America, you can be killed if you know something you're not supposed to know. They will find your body somewhere in an alley with a, with a bullet hole, three of them in the back of your head, and then claim you committed suicide. This is the America you live in today.